confused. Okay. We're live. All right. We are live. All right. We're testing. We did this again. All right. That was good. That was a good first start. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Carly McGuire. This is our elephant manager, Mora, here at Toyota Elephant Passage. We are keeping our social distance for our first installment of Zoo to You, a virtual safari here at Denver Zoo, bringing you that content that you love so much while you're at home doing your part. So we have some playful boys behind us here at Toyota Elephant Passage. Mora, tell us who is behind us here right now. So behind us right now is Bodie and Jake. Bodie is the largest of the two, and um, Jake being the smaller one. Right now, Bodie is about 15 years old. He will be um, celebrating his birthday next month, actually. Um, but at 15, he's about 11 feet tall and weighs about 10,800 pounds. Very, very large animal, and he's still growing. And then Jake next to him, standing over there, he is 10 years old, he's the youngest of our herd. Um, and even though he is the youngest, he's not the smallest, believe it or not. Chuck, <laughs> his half brother, is smaller than him. Jake right now at the age of 10 is weighing right about 7,500 pounds. So you can see the size difference between the two. Um, five years in age is the difference between them. Wow, and so Bodhi, he's almost as tall as our oldest Asian male elephant, Groucho, isn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, they have actually caught up pretty pretty close. Groucho weighs only about a thousand pounds more than Bodhi at this point. Groucho still continues to be technically our only fully grown male, um, but Bodhi has definitely started catching up pretty quickly. He's growing pretty fast. So since Jake clearly wants some attention, he's showing off for the camera. Tell us a little bit about his personality. He is one of our two newest Asian elephants to join us here at Toyota Elephant Passage, and he's a little camera ham. Yes. Um, Jake and his half brother Chuck are both very high energy, very young, very playful still. Bodhi, at the age of 15, still does really well with that sort of energy um, and is, is very patient with the younger uh, Jake and Chuck. But um, Jake is very well behaved when Bodhi's around. If Bodhi wasn't in the picture right now, Jake would even be more crazy, more high energy. Um, than he even seems right now. I think these two are just uh, using this as a good opportunity for some attention at this point. Absolutely. So tell us about the dynamic here because Bodhi is in a phase called must. Yes. So tell us what must is. This is a very um, interesting thing that in, in male elephants go through. Yes, must is a annual hormonal period that every adult male elephant goes through. Um, and it's really fascinating because during this time, it lasts about two to three months. It changes for each individual. So time of year is different for each individual. Um, how it changes for them is different for each individual. Um, but some of the things that we're noticing when Bodhi comes into a uh, must is he first starts draining from his temporal glands here. So as he moves around, you might be able to see some dark staining down his face. So that dark patch is actually something called temporin. And then um, he also starts to lose his appetite. So once he starts um, really kind of experiencing these hormonal changes, he'll start to stop eating. Um, and that's when he becomes more um, active with the other elephants. Now, the cool thing is, this is the first year we are trying to keep him socialized for as long as possible. When he experienced this previously, he would be separated from the other elephants. And we're really trying to see if we're able to keep him socialized because it's a very incredible learning opportunity for Jake. It looks like Bodhi is now kind of taking some time away because Jake is very in his space. He's yes. kind of bugging him with his trunk. But we yeah. have some questions. Everyone wants to know what elephants eat. What are their favorite snacks? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what are they munching on? Every elephant eats a different amount of hay. So each of the elephants who live here, there's five males total, they all get individualized care. So depending on their life stage and their growth um, and how they're experiencing growth at that time is, is how much hay they get. So this gra grass hay that Jake is eating right in front of us, um, Jake gets about 120 pounds of that hay every day just for himself. Bodhi gets 180 pounds of hay just for himself. Now that will change as he goes through this hormonal period. Um, but that, again, like I said, their hay amounts uh, change regularly based on what they're experiencing and their energy levels and their activity. Um, 
but they definitely all have their favorite treats. So we use treats just like people probably do with your dogs and cats. Um, when we're training them, we use different produce items like apples, carrots, sweet potatoes, um, and they definitely have their favorites. So Billy, for example, who lives here, he's our 12 year old. He loves bananas. Those are hands down his favorite. Um, Bodie, who is right behind us, cantaloupe and honeydew. Those are really, really good ones for him. Great. So if you're just joining us, this is Zoo to You, a virtual safari that we're hosting here at Denver Zoo. I'm Carly McGuire. This is Maura Davis, our elephant manager. And we are really excited to be able to bring you some content while we are closed here at Denver Zoo. And it's always a great time if you are able. We are taking donations. We have an emergency fund set up. If you go to denverzoo.org, you can find out how to donate. We do rely heavily on those donations at this time while we're closed. Of course, our animal care is not going to be affected by this closure. We still have keepers here. We still have our nutrition team, our vets. We are taking very good care of these animals while we're closed, but we could always use your support. So if you can and are able to donate, we really appreciate it at this time. And we also, you know, Sarah's crane uh, squawking going on over there. They want some attention too. We're gonna try to get you to see them over there. But this is Toyota Elephant Passage. So we have a lot of Asian animals here, including our Asian elephants. This is Bodhi the left, on the left there. And this is Jake. Who else do we have in our all male herd? And why do we have an all male herd? So that's a great question. We have, um, we opened in 2012 specifically to house male elephants. Now, there's a lot of facilities and other zoological institutions that have elephants and they're breeding and they have offspring, nice healthy male offspring, which is fantastic. Um, but naturally, once male elephants reach a certain age in their family group, they get kicked out. Mom, mom sends them on their way and they go and join up with these smaller bachelor groups of young males and sometimes older dominant males. It's really important for them to learn the ins and outs of being a male elephant from the best teacher, right? A male elephant. So we replicated that here. Uh, 10 acres was dedicated to this exhibit to house male elephants. And right now we have five resident males um, coming from all over, all over the country, even the world. Billy came from Dublin, Ireland to join us here. Um, so besides Bodie and Jake, we have Billy who is 12, um, Jake's half brother, Chuck, who is almost 12. He is 11 years old currently. And then lastly, um, kind of the boss of our group, the teacher, the leader of our, of our bachelor herd is Groucho. Groucho is 50 years old this year. He turned 50. The life expectancy, average life expectancy for the Asian elephant is 47. So 50 is a big milestone for him. Um, and he's a fantastic leader for these guys. When he's involved, every opportunity that the, the four young males can be near him is incredible learning for their development during this phase of, of young adulthood, so to speak. Well, we have some questions. Um, Ethan, five years old, he wants to know how much does an elephant eat in a day? You kind of covered this, it varies based on their age, but what is someone like Bodhi eating every, how much is he eating? He's probably eating 180 pounds of hay, plus let's say 10 pounds of different types of trees or grasses that we um, can harvest around the grounds here at Denver Zoo. Everything from bamboo to maybe some oak, different things like that are really good for their teeth. Um, and then like I said, the, those produce items. So um, throughout the day when we're doing multiple training sessions, they're probably getting 10 to 15 pounds of produce every day. Um, for their training. So they, they eat a lot. Yes, they do. <laughs> Gabby wants to know, why do elephants have such long tusks? Are they more like teeth or are they horns or like fingernail material? So they are teeth. They are modified incisors. They just happen to come outside of their head. So they're very, very interesting, but they are more like teeth. Um, but they do use them for a wide variety of things that other animals who have horns would use them similarly uh, to a horn. So they dig in the ground, they uh, rip bark off of logs. So we give them large logs that uh, still have bark on them and we take, you know, the elephants get down and, and use their tusks to remove the bark from the logs. And every elephant wears them differently. So some of these guys really enjoy to, to grow their, their tusks out and they don't use their tusks very often. But some of our elephants, like Bodhi here, he uses his tusks very regularly 
he loves to play with logs and really get down and, and use his tusks to engage with those logs. So little pieces break off here and there. So that's where we start to see elephants with different length uh, tusks is based on their preference really. Yeah. So that's not painful for them if it breaks off. Correct. Yep. Yep. Not painful. And someone wants to know, you know, we're in Denver. It's a beautiful day here today, but sometimes it gets cold. How do our elephants handle cold weather? So when it's below 40 degrees, they always have access to a heat source. So they can come into the barn, get nice and warm, go back outside and play in the snow. And we have actually seen the elephants play in the snow. In fact, Jake, last year we had a very large snowstorm um, later in the springtime. And we actually have um, a film of him getting down on his knees and sliding down a hill and throwing snow in the air and trumpeting. Uh, he was definitely having a fun time. So they do enjoy the snow, um, but they do come inside regularly to get nice and toasty as well. So there's plenty of space in the elephant barn for them to get some, some good heat. And we have Asian elephants here. So explain the big difference between an Asian elephant and an African elephant. So one of the main differences and the easiest way you can tell that you're looking at an Asian elephant right now is by looking at the size of their ears. You can see Jake is showing off perfectly his ears right now, and they're pretty small in comparison to the size of his head and the size of his body. African elephants have very large ears. A lot of people say they resemble the shape of the continent of Africa versus an Asian elephant where they look like the shape of the country of India. Wow, parents, if you have kids at home, we would love to see your artists at work draw us a portrait of either Jake here or Bodhi with those Asian elephant ears, those beautiful trunks. I think Jake would really appreciate um, some fan art. So if you guys want to draw those pictures, post them in our comments. We would love to see them. This is Zoo to You, a virtual safari that we're hosting here at Denver Zoo. Again, I am Carly McGuire. This is our elephant manager, Mora, and we're talking about our elephants. And, and Jake's like, oh, it's time to, you know, it's time to be on again. You know, we got a lot of people watching you, Jake. I think he likes it. <laughs> I think he does like it. A lot of people are wondering if, if any of the animals, especially the elephants, do they notice that we don't have guests here right now? Um, I guess that's hard to say. Elephants in general do really well in adapting to different environments. So they have experienced the zoo without people before. All night long they, they experience it without people. And if we close for a, a snow day for whatever reason. So I think they've had enough time to experience different moments without people. So it's not hugely different, but you can definitely tell how quiet it is around here. Um, and in particular, Chuck, Jake's half-brother, um, he definitely likes to get applause from people. And so that definitely seems to be something that he would be missing at this point. <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, when we do our demonstrations, we normally have a big crowd. People really yes. love it. That is really important training for our animals yep. so that they can voluntarily participate in their own medical care. And none of that has stopped despite the fact that we don't have the crowd for the demo, Correct. we're still giving them that important training, that enrichment every day, and that's really supported by your all's donation. So if you can and are able to donate, we are posting links in the comment section of this live stream. So thank you so much. We've had so many people reach out, they wanna help, and we know that it's a tough time for a lot of people, so we appreciate what you can give to Denver Zoo right now. Another quick way that you can help Denver Zoo, if you're ordering online via Amazon, it is very easy to go to smile.amazon.com Denver Zoo is a trusted charity, so you can have portions of your portions of your purchase from Amazon benefit Denver Zoo when you designate it as your trusted charity and you use the smile.amazon.com link when you shop. So we would really appreciate that if you're just supporting those necessities, board games, anything to get you through this time at home. If you want to help Denver Zoo in the process, it's very easy to do that as well. So someone wants to know, well, someone just says, Jake is my new favorite. <laughs> he is a favorite of a lot of people who come to visit. He is very engaging. Um, he definitely loves people being around. As you can see, he has, I think, stayed here almost the entire time. <laughs> very engaged. Yes. But he's a little older. He's like, you know, I, I need some time. Some time yeah. off. <laughs> but this is perfect. This is what we were hoping. Um, males in must probably wouldn't engage all the time. And that's one of the greatest things about this exhibit is we have the space to give them the opportunity to interact if they want to 
but also to give some distance and um, spend time alone if they want to as well. Yeah. So they definitely come together. Jake gets those great learning opportunities from Bodhi, um, but Bodhi's also able to go and do his own thing if he wants to. Yeah, this is only one of five yards that we have here at Toyota Alpha Passage for our elephants. So we also have probably Groucho and Billy and Chuck over in some of the others. Bandu, our greater one-horned rhino, is in one of the yards right now. Our mama Tensing and new baby calf, they're still behind the scenes. We're gonna bring you updates on them too. Uh, someone says, what is a doctor's visit like for an elephant? How do we get them the medical care they need? That is a great question. So the elephants and all of the animals here at Denver Zoo are trained in a style of training where we encourage them to work with us to take care of them. So their health care um, is something that they actively participate in. So elephants get regular foot care. Their feet are very important. As you can see, they're carrying a lot of weight on those toes. So weekly, we ask them to present their feet and we can file their nails. We even do annual uh, x-rays. The veterinarians will come down to us. The elephants are too big to go to the hospital, so it's one of the <laughs> few times that the, the vet staff come to us and help us if there's anything that we need help with. Um, but they take x-rays of their feet um, once a year to make sure their, their toes look really nice and healthy. We also take blood samples every week, so that's something that um, is a really important part of their care to make sure that inside they're staying nice and healthy as well in case it's um, uh, some sort of infection they're fighting or maybe they're getting a cold of some kind. We can see that in the blood before we see any sort of symptoms of it externally. And all of that is continuing right now. So we have our full staff here. We are working with them just as we did previously to being closed. Um, they're getting a lot of attention, a lot of snacks, um, and, and a lot of that training time to make sure that they are staying really healthy. Someone wants to know how long does it take to get an elephant comfortable with those training techniques? It, de it depends. If it's something like, um, you know, opening their mouth and letting us check their teeth, that takes a little bit less time to teach them um, because it's not as invasive versus teaching them to stand still for us to stick them with a needle. They could walk away at any time. We teach them that it's okay to stay with us and they can trust us. Um, and that takes, that takes some time. So in order for someone to train a blood sample maybe with an elephant and we take their blood from a vein on their back leg, um, it probably takes a few months for it to really um, become a behavior that the elephants are excited about and really you know looking forward to getting those treats at the end because not everybody likes to get stuck with a, a needle no. <laughs> um, but they have learned that it's a very okay part of their routine because they get such a great reward um, at the end of it and on the flip side of that what happens if an elephant doesn't do what we want them to do maybe they don't open their mouth maybe they don't present their foot maybe they leave the stall while we're trying to get blood what happens that is totally fine. That is a <laughs> choice on their part. They can leave any time they want and they don't get punished for it. So whenever an elephant does something incorrectly or something that we maybe want to see um, reduced in frequency, maybe we don't want them to do th that same behavior over and over again, we simply ignore it. So we don't yell at them. We don't punish them at all. We don't force them to do the thing that they just chose not to do. We simply ignore it and we move on to something that we know will be positive and successful. Wow. It's a really, it's a, it's a fun way to work with them. Every interaction we have with them is very positive, um, which is how we've been able to build such great relationships with all of the elephants that are here. That is so great. Someone wants to know, Kevin wants to know, how many teeth do you have? So each elephant at the time has four teeth, so four very large molars, um, but over the course of their lifetime, they have six sets of those teeth. So we have two sets, our baby teeth and our adult set. Um, elephants have six. So they are very large teeth, though, much larger than ours. Um, each, each one of those molars can be about the size of a brick. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, when do they start kind of cycling that out? Um, very early on, the first couple of sets um, are are lost earlier and over a cor course of a few years, whereas then when they get older and those teeth get larger, um, they fall out less regularly. All right, and how much water do our elephants drink in a day? That's been a really popular question. <laughs> that is a great question. Um, right now, they probably don't drink as much water as they would in the summer. Um, 
the exact number I don't entirely know. We do have automatic drinkers that continue to refill with very fresh water as they drink. So I don't entirely know how much each of them drink each day. But right now they're definitely drinking a little less than they would in the summertime. Um, and their time spent swimming in the pools and other areas of the water, the wallows, the big mud wallows is less as well right now. Um, but that is a great question. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell. Yes. And can you tell an elephant's age just by looking at them? You can get a general age, especially if they're younger, but genetics we've seen play a huge role in the size difference, even in just the males that live here. So Billy and Chuck are very similar in age. They're only about six months apart, but have about 3,000 pounds in size difference. So very different um, even though they're very similar ages and again Jake is younger than Chuck and is bigger than Chuck so um, it is a little bit different but as they get older they start to develop more mature looking features in their face their tusks come in thicker the male elephants um, with their tusks will come in thicker so there are certain ways to tell but not anything very definite so how do we know this is the question we got uh, before we started how do we know when an elephant's ready to mate or is sexually mature and what do we do here about that? So we don't have any females here, right? That is um, the reason we're here is to house all males. So we provide to the, the breeding community through sample collections. Um, when elephants start to mature, it's around the age that they are here. Um, and the reason they're here is because they have matured and their mom kicked them out of their group. So. Here we do know that they're the age where they would start um, to become sexually mature. And like I said, we train them for sample collections. So again, these collections are done in the exact same fashion as the rest of our healthcare where the elephants can leave at any time. But they allow us to um, take these samples which are a lot easier to send to people who are potentially doing artificial inseminations across the country versus sending the 10,000 pound Yes. elephant to that facility. Now that's definitely an option. Um, if one of these young males was recommended for breeding at other facilities, they absolutely could move there for that purpose. Um, in the meantime, while they live here, we're going to continue to provide to that community by sending samples when requested. And when we say recommended for breeding, what we're referring to is the species survival plan. This is sort of a regulated plan that decides which animals are gonna mate with which in association of zoos and aquariums accredited zoos across the country. So it's very important. It's actually how we got tensing pregnant. We used the SSP and we got an artificial insemination sample from a greater one horned rhino in Omaha. So we didn't have to send a whole other greater one horned rhino here. Right. Bandu wasn't ready to mate with her. So that process is very important and very helpful that we're able to get that because we can continue these species without having to send these thousand pound animals yeah. <laughs> across the country. Big process. What, are, what are the types of things that the SSP looks for when it comes to elephant breeding? So it's, it is mostly genetics. Uh, there are not very many elephants in North America. So breeding is a very important program for Asian elephants and making sure that you know, genetically it's a good match is, is really, really important. Um, but at this point, there, there really are very few elephants, so we're doing everything we can to try and help um, calves be born at all of those facilities that have breeding, breeding groups. Yeah, what is the gestation period for elephants? <laughs> it is, long. it's long, it is 22 months. Ooh. Yes, it is 22 months. And then when that baby is finally born, it is about 300 pounds. It's a big baby. Yeah. Um, people really thought uh, Tensing's pregnancy was long at about 15 months. Yeah. So elephants have her beat. So, all right, well, we've still got a lot more questions coming in. We can answer a couple more and then we will wrap this up. And we will be posting this on YouTube, Denver Zoo's YouTube page. So if you missed part of it, or if you want to watch it again, or refer to friends and family and kids, you can go to our YouTube page and watch it there. We're going to give them some treats because these guys have been so good. Uh, someone wants to know, do the elephants use their trunks to scoop up water? Do they yes. breathe in through their nose? They, the trunk is a very cool appendage. Um, it is their nose. Those are two nostrils at the end. So they don't drink through their trunk. Um, if they suck up too much water, it would be just like us jumping into a pool and getting no, uh, a nose full of water. Um, 
but they do slurp it up into their trunk and then put it directly into their mouth. It's similar to how they're eating here. So they're picking up different items off of the ground with that trunk and then putting it into their mouth. They can pick up really small things with yes. that trunk. They are big animals. They can pick up those tiny pellets. Yes, they can pick up anything from a skittle all the way to some of these very large logs that you see out here. We have to use heavy equipment to move because they are eight or 900 pound um, logs and these guys can move them so easily with those trunks. It's, it's a pretty amazing, pretty amazing appendage. Someone wants to know if they ever get aggressive with each other, if they ever don't get along. If there are times, yes, and that's a main reason why we watch them so closely. There are times when their behavior could change or if Bodhi's, you know, done hanging out with the, the youngster, if he's being too playful, things are going very well right now and Jake's being very respectful, but there are times when we do see, especially the older two, Groucho and Bodhi, maybe if they've had enough, enough playtime um, and they might get a little, a little done with it, but we haven't seen anything that's overly concerning or we haven't, luckily, knock on wood, we haven't had two elephants that just generally do not get along. They've all been able to work on their relationships and really develop um, those relationships. When Chuck and Jake first moved here, you know, it took a while for the other elephants to really kind of develop those, those relationships with Chuck and Jake. And especially because Chuck and Jake have such a strong relationship, being half brothers, they, they've known each other for a while. Um, but things have been going very, very well, and, and they're doing a really great job integrating in the herd. All right, we're going to finish up with a few superlatives. Who is the goofiest? Elsa. Goofiest. Jake, I think a lot of you have seen that <laughs> firsthand today. He's probably the goofiest. Who is the um, easiest to work with? Ooh, I would say Billy, probably, our 12-year-old. He's very, very smart and quick to pick up on things, and he just loves it. He loves to, to hang out with us and work with us and, um, and learn new things. Who enjoys our demonstrations the most? Who enjoys participating in those? Ooh, Chuck. Chuck. Chuck really loves a huge audience, especially when he starts to show off um, and he gets those big rounds of applauses and the oohs and the ahs. Uh, he definitely feeds off of that. Who is our most relaxed dude? Uh, Groucho and Jake probably tie. Um, they're very mellow at times when they're hanging out together. He has moments where he's very high energy, Jake here, but Groucho is very chill, just likes to go with the flow. If there's food there, that's even better. Um, and especially when Jake ha hangs out with Groucho, they, they kind of mimic that, that behavior. <laughs> So give me a give me a superlative for Bodhi then. Um, ooh, he's the most clever. Ooh. Yeah, he's he's very smart. Um, he used to actually stack items like toys on top of each other. You'd come in in the morning and he had almost like cleaned up his room and like stacked toys on top of each other. And um, he's he's brilliant in that way. But that sometimes makes him difficult to work with because you're like, who's teaching who here? <laughs> he's very smart and he's always 10 steps ahead of everybody um, but he's very very clever all right Maura thank you so much for your time you're welcome Jay, for being a willing participant yeah. too Bodhi thank you all for tuning in if you feel like you can donate to Denver Zoo at this time we have posted links uh, and ways you can donate in the comment section you can go to denverzoo.org or you can go to smile.amazon.com to figure out how to make Denver Zoo your trusted charity for your Amazon shopping. Thank you all for tuning in. We will be back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. for another Zoo to You virtual safari from Denver Zoo. Thanks, everyone.